yes, it's time. Yay. 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 It's time. Yay. It's Friday. It's seven o'clock here on KZSC. My name is Bennett Williamson, your host of the Audience Adventure Radio Hour, the show where you, the listeners, help us not to die. Um, I mean, the show where you, our listeners, <laughs> call in and help us make choice points along the way on our adventure. Uh, we feature a lot of game books and different types of games here on the show. And uh, tonight, very special episode. We've got a packed house in here. We're going to be reading from <laughs> Groom of the Tomb by Damien Katz, uh, the author and also a librarian of game books himself. You can check out his stuff at gamebooks.org. And I'm also really happy to say that you can now find this show as a podcast by going to audienceadventure.show. Yes. So. We'll have this show up there, and I'm getting the back episodes up from all this summer. And we did an interview with Damien Katz, the author of tonight's book. So if you like what you hear, you can hear from Damien and learn a lot about the thought process. And, oh, I mean, that guy knows a lot about game books. So definitely check that out at audienceadventure.show. Now, let's welcome in everyone joining me here tonight. Coming in, uh, we got on microphone number four, Michael Chemers. Hello. Hey, B Dubs. Hey. Great to be back on uh, the show. Yeah, welcome back. It's been a while. You yeah. were, you helped us set it off at the beginning of the summer. That's right. It's my, the most fun thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um, I, wow. And now you're back. And now I'm back. Wow. Well, live it up, baby. Uh, <laughs> Are you? Look at me. I'm just like woo. It's true. Tad like keep it. Tad Leckman, right here. Hello. Thank you, my co-host Tad. Uh, going down the line, Elizabeth Swenson in the house. Hello. Hey. And uh, sharing the microphone over there, uh, joining the show for the first time. Hi, it's Misha Cardenas. Hi. Hi. Yay. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Misha. And, of course, the one and only Annika, the young page lord, page keeper. Hey, Annika. Good evening. Good evening. And um, you're going to be keeping some stats for us tonight, so thank you for that very good deed that you do for us all the time. So, folks... Here's what's really important. We're going to need your help throughout the night. The number here is 831-459-4036. That's the number to call or text. We'll make it really clear. There's when we have these choice points that we need to be made. Um, but yeah, 831-459-4036. Call or text. But, you know, really, just call. It's, it's, that's how you really... <laughs> it's the more fun way. Way if more you can. fun. Now, Tad, will you please bring us into... Uh, Damien Katz's groom of the tomb and set it up however you see yeah. fit. So this is slightly different than the more choose your own adventure style books we've been reading because there are a few more mechanics. It's a very light mechanics. Um, we had made some decisions about the main character which you will discover along the way. Um, and this book is called The Groom of the Tomb as we mentioned but it has a subtitle because it's a it's almost more of an Edwardian um, dime novel than anything. Um, so the subtitle is Lancelot Darling's Decisions. Mm. Um, and so I'll give you a little introduction and then we'll head into the meat of it. The year is 1881. You are Lancelot Darling, a young New Yorker of wealth and fashion. You are splendidly handsome and imposing. Well, and your I, almost so princely fortune precludes the need of work. <laughs> Tomorrow is your wedding day Ooh. with Lily Lawrence, uh, a girl who is young, mm, gifted, uh, lovely, and uh, herself due to receive a splendid inheritance someday. Cha-ching. <laughs> you could not be happier. La la la. What greater joy is there than to live a life filled with love and free from responsibilities? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> All the things. <clears throat> now we begin chapter one. Sweet Lily Lawrence has committed suicide. Oh. Whoa, impossible. <laughs> Yet it is true. The inquest has been held with the verdict that Miss Lawrence came to her death by a dagger thrust inflicted by her own hand, probably under a temporary aberration of the mind. 
Since learning of the tragedy, you have been unable to find the strength to leave the luxurious <laughs> hotel room where you board. <laughs> All you can do is envision the horrible scene again and again, her body lying prone on the velvet carpet with its delicate pattern of mysosis and the soft light of June morning shining through the open window on the sill form. Robed in creamy white satin and priceless lace, the fair hair streaming across the floor, the turquoise blue eyes wide open with a look of utter unutterable horror frozen in their upward stare, the small and dimpled white hand clinching tightly to a tiny jeweled dagger whose murderous thrust had left a ghastly, gory, crimson stain on the snowy satin lace above her heart. And to think that just yesterday I was wondering what greater joy is there than to live a life filled with love and free from responsibilities. <laughs> well, today is your beloved fiancé's funeral. <laughs> you feel weak and ill at ease, and you are not sure if it is time to, fa if it is time to face the world again. What will you do? Okay, right off the bat, listeners, we're going to need your help. And I would just like to request, listeners, that I am able to stay in this luxurious hotel room. <laughs> so here's your Eating options. Oysters. Uh, to summon your strength and attend the funeral, uh. we'll turn to page 27. Or to stay away and reflect on the tragedy that has blighted your life mm. and stay in the hotel room, presumably. Listeners. We'll, we'll turn to page 39. So the number is 831-459-4036. Again, you can call or text 831-459-4036. I'll never forget the way she lay on that bread spread with the, an incredibly high thread count. I just read it. That's why it <laughs> just happened. That's, I, that's hey, fresh in my mind. I do oh. have one important thing, which is that I brought the, uh, the very important <laughs> microphone back. So Hooray! don't worry. We have plenty that of gives reverb. Me the strength I need to attend the funeral, I think. 831-459-4036. I is, don't know. This Lancelot just, wants to stay inside. Is the uh, text machine operating? Text, texts are up and operating. The okay. phone lines are open. 831-459-4036. With all the many people who are calling. And, well, oh, you I just had one. to shame him a little bit, and here comes a caller. Yes. Right now. Every time. Uh, caller, hello. You're on the air. Oh, my God. Goodness. Um, <clears throat> Hi, what's Hi your there. name? Where are you calling from? Uh, San Francisco, actually. Your yeah. name is San Francisco. What's an unusual name? <laughs> it's uh, German. Ah. <laughs> That's even more <laughs> unusual. Well, uh, San Francisco from San Francisco, <laughs> what are you thinking? Are we going to attend this f uh, funeral of our recently deceased fiance? Or Absolutely, yes. Oh. Well, yes, yes. Absolutely. Go to the funeral. All right, say. then. Well, our San Francisco there's listener. Food? There there's food. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> That's a very good point. There will probably that is be true. <laughs> Perigord oysters there if I know Lily's family. It's, <laughs> and it's I a rich do. funeral. Well, so. listener, why don't you stay on the line yes. with us uh, while we turn to. Well, it's not even. Yeah, while we turn to number 27. You arrive at the funeral like a sleepwalker, barely aware of how you reached your destination. Your overstrained mind is barely able to take in the scene. Occasionally, a grieving mourner offers you some words of sympathy, so but your <laughs> Thank you. muted thanks always Thank you. come out as a groan. Mm. From time to time, you have mm. the strange feeling that you are being watched. <sighs> However, apart from the strange moment where you catch the dark eyes of Lily's cousin and housemate, the widow, the widowed Mrs. Vance, Ooh. you are unable to put the source to the sensation. Uh. Eventually, it comes time to approach Lily for one last look. Uh. You feel your resolve weakening. <coughs> Can you face this tragic sight? Uh, San Francisco German listener. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear uh, in the beginning, I, I, but I, I'm, I'm with you now. Should um, we, well, we've can approached... Can face the sight? Yeah, can you look at her? We're, you're going to approach the casket. to say If you say goodbye to Lily, we'll turn to page 173. Oh. Or you can flee in horror. And we'll turn to, oh, flea in horror. And uh, we'll turn to page 109. I really appreciate how Demian Katz uh, really gives us as characters the options to do the least possible heroic thing. <laughs> yes, say goodbye well, I, or I, run away. Yeah, I feel like I've, I, you know, I've, uh, I've showed up. I've, I've uh, yeah. paid my respects. Uh, 
I, I, I'm, I'm getting a, I'm getting the feeling that I should flee. 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 <laughs> oh, 109 San it Francisco, is. San Francisco, you're a man after my own heart. Yes. <laughs> 109. Flee. Flee. Let's see. What Here we are. Flee? 109. Oh. 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 It is too much. Oh. It is too much. <laughs> You cannot face this horror. You feel the blood drain from your face and you stagger through the mourners, struggling uh, to avoid, avoid a swoon. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's not a swoon. Uh, out on the street, you take a deep breath and try to regain some semblance of strength. Eventually, you manage to make your way home and collapse into bed for a night of troubling dreams. In the morning, you wake up filled with regrets. You were so close, and yet you failed to bid farewell to the joy of your life. You feel like a weak fool, but perhaps it is not too late to make amends. If you can just convince Lily's father to give you one more chance. No! Oh, no! A chance to say goodbye. You hurry to Mr. Lawrence's stately mansion, barely noticing the flowers blooming in the handsome grounds or the twittering and chirping of the gay summer birds. You ring the doorbell. Ding dong. And an obsequious <laughs> server ushers you inside. You state your business I'm and Mr. Right Lawrence is summer, summoned. All right, we're going to turn to page 74 as no instructed choices. here. 74. Moving right along. Oh, here we go. Uh, Victorians have doorbells? This is more Edwardian, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I no, think. They, um, oh, okay, all right. They, I mean, I think they would. Yes, well, sounds no, super high tech. W. H. Gilbert had a doorbell that his mother, <laughs> that his father, refused to press for fear that he would be electrocuted <laughs> on the steps. Uh, it's true. No, that's that's one. That's row absolutely on. true. You can look it up. Here we are. Yes, seventy-four. Mr. Lawrence's <clears throat> portly form is bowed feebly in his genial face is seamed with lines of grief and care while premature silver threads shine amid his chestnut brown hair. In spite of his own troubles, he studies your afflicted form with concern. Lance, my poor boy, you have been ill. Yes, I have been ill. I confirm without pausing and crush the banker's <laughs> hand in my strong <laughs> and conscious grasp. Mr. Lawrence... I've come here to beg a favor of you. Name it. I want the key to your vault. <laughs> no, not that vault. <laughs> the crypt, I mean. Oh, I want yes. to see my Lily's face once more. Would it be... Well, would it be wise? I don't know. I don't ask. I only know that my soul hungers for a sight of my darling's face. Do not refuse me, my friend. Let me see her once more before death has obliterated all her beauty. Mm, better it's, think of her, Lance, bleh. as when you last saw her in life and health. Mm. She is already changed. Oh. You're too weak to bear the agitation that would ensue if I granted your request. You, you refuse me, then? She was to have been my wife, ere now. Yet you will not suffer me to press one last long kiss on the cold, decayed, stinking lips of my darling. Oh, do not refuse him. <gasps> Mrs. Vance. Mrs. Vance glides forward and lays a persuasive little hand on the banker's arm. Think of his bleeding heart and blighted hopes. Yes. Remember how fondly he loved her. Yes. Go with him to the vault and show him our broken lily lying asleep in the deep rest she coveted. You can't help flashing a look of gratitude upon the beautiful pleader as she ceases uh -huh. to speak. The banker pauses irresolutely. If I thought he could bear it. I can bear it. I will. Only grant my request. Okay, so now we're going to have this gameplay oh, yeah. mechanic. We're going to test the charm of our lead character, Sir Lancelot. And now, uh, as I recall, Michael, uh, or actually Annika... Yes, Annika. What, yep. what, what did we go with with the charm? Average, strong, or strong? Strong, very we are so, charming. very charming. We chose strong, Lancelot. So very charming. We're gonna roll a six-sided die Ooh. against the chart in the book um, for our strong. Ooh, Ooh we got a one, oh. which is a failure. Oh. Okay, so if you fail, which we just did, we're gonna go on to page nineteen. Page 19. Section 19. Section 19. Thanks. I needed a word. They're not pages. They're sections. They're 
They don't know that on they don't, the radio. Yeah, we now should, I should have just know. stated it quietly. No, Lance. I dread the effect on your already weak nerves. Remember what a difference there must be between the blooming lily you last looked upon and the poor faded flower and that gloomy stone vault. I you could, could, I can tell from his eyes that the <laughs> man would not be persuaded otherwise. <clears throat> Very well. But if I cannot say goodbye to Lily, I must be alone with my thoughts. The banker looks momentarily regretful, but he does nothing to prevent your abrupt departure. There's only one thing to do now. Take matters into your own hands. That's why I asked to be alone. <laughs> You're sure. <laughs> oh, The oh. sexton <laughs> holds the key to the vault. Perhaps he can more easily be persuaded than Lily's father. Yes, the sexton. So, turning now to page section uh, 138. You still with us, San Francisco? <laughs> uh, still here, Tad. All right. I'm, I'm Lancelot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tad. Wait. Excuse me. 138. That's all right. I'm, I mean, Tad's still here. Uh, 138. I'm the one with the beautiful go. voice. <laughs> it's true. I'm just Tad. Let's okay. go to the cemetery. You arrive at the beautiful cemetery containing the Lawrence family vault, and you immediately knock on the door of the sexton's house. The door is answered by an old man who peers at you with increasing degrees of confusion what? as you make your impassioned request for the last loving look of the late Lily. You're the poor girl's fiancé? Yes. The, the only one? What is You're, going on here? Uh, the sexton blinks at you with apparent embarrassment and rather than answering your question... Uh, let us go together. I will open the vault for you. Hmm. Thinking better of arguing at this point, you simply accompany the man from his home and down the shady path to the vault containing your lost beloved. He unlocks the door and leads you into the marble edifice. You walk together down the echoing aisle Echo. between rows of moldy, decaying coffins and pause with beating hearts and labored breaths beside a new casket loaded with wreaths and crosses of fragrant white hothouse flowers. The murky air of the charnel house is heavy with the scent of two roses, violets, and pale white roses. With trembling hands, you remove these tokens of affection until the lid of the coffin is disclosed. With a shudder, you read the inscription on the silver plate. Lily Lawrence, aged <laughs> 18. The sexton draws out the silver screws and removes the lid. He lets out a horrified <gasps> gasp as he gazes within. The costly casket what? is empty. Oh my God. White satin cushioning that love had devised to make the bed of death a soft one holds the impress of her form. The pillow is lightly dented where her golden head had lain, but the cold form that rested there yesterday with white hands folded over the quiet heart, with pale lips shut over the woeful secret of her death, that loved form is gone from your gaze. So now the game book tells us to add the keyword sexton and go to 22. And I think this is a sort of um, collect them all moment here in this game book. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Discovered it, Lily's grave. It will empty. have effects later. Oh, excellent. Let's see. Moving on to section a 22. 22. Several days have passed since the shocking discovery in the vault. You are still in a daze of grief and shock, Ugh. and your anguish over your love, lost love has been compounded by concern for her sister, Ada, Ada. who has been racked with illness ever since the tragedy. Oh, what are you doing? Unable to contemplate further time alone with your thoughts, you had made an appointment <laughs> to meet Mr. Lawrence. After some time strolling carelessly up and down Wall Street, you oh, see your friend. Excuse me. Ow. Taking, looking a careworn and wretched as careworn and wretched as you feel, you shake his hand with a little pause, ask the question that has not been has been on your mind all day. Is there anything to eat? I mean, excuse me. No. Is there is there any news? Uh, none. Some of the sharpest detectives in the city are trying to trace the body, but as yet there is not the faintest clue. He sighs. Not a clue, eh? And you <sighs> echo the sigh. <sighs> You walk together in silence for a time, observing sympathy in every familiar eye that looks your way, yet having no conversations. No one wishes to speak of the mournful tragedy whose impress is written so legibly on your faces. After a time, Mr. Lawrence comes to work up enough spirit to make a proposal. Uh, come home and dine with me, Lance. We haven't seen you at the house in too long. I, c 
can't imagine. All Let's right. See. Now, listeners, we need your help. Well, that'll be fun. San Francisco German, thank you. Thank you, Sen. You're welcome. You let you, it, you, uh, you've, it's been a pleasure. You've brought us this it's far. Fantastic. And I'm Thank gonna you. I'm gonna make room. Better than flex. Even. Yay! <laughs> we will see if the next caller flex. will keep us uh, in line too. So thank you. <laughs> thank and, you, Sam. Uh, let's say the lines are open. We're at eight three one four five nine four zero three six. That's a number you can call or text. And our choice now to take Mr. Lawrence up on his offer. We'll turn to section fifty one, or to once again strike out on oh. our own. To exp- and explore the city on our own. We'll turn to section 85. So this is how it works here on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour on KZSC. We need your help. 831-459-4036. Reading Groom of the Tomb by Damien Katz. A sad man. A, a, what are you? You're a sad rich man. Sad man. He's, <laughs> bereft. Rich, He's bereft. I'm bereft, but I have nothing to comfort me but my millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> my Park me. Avenue apartment. <laughs> and my membership to the Skull and Bones Society. Well, let's see mm. if this uh, caller has some suggestions. Caller, are you there? Yes, I just wondered if you guys up at the university uh, have a translation that you could put on of Beowulf. Oh, that's you're live on the air right now. Oh, Tristan and Isolde. Oh yes, Tristan and Isolde. It's a, a lovely, a lovely piece. Are you going to do that up the top of your head right are now? You yes, I'm going to. I'll caller, sing it now. Are you caller. calling? Are you calling for the Audience Adventure Radio Hour? No, I was just. Interested. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Thanks we're gonna for calling clear in. the lines, and again, the number is eight three one. Four five nine four zero three six. You can call or text. Right now, we're trying to figure out if we're going to take Mr. Lawrence up on his offer. This is the magic of live radio. And eat some food. <laughs> there wasn't. Turned out to not be any food at that uh, at the uh, funeral. Not there was a not. single oyster. <laughs> We've just been promised dinner. Uh, yes, I think we must take Mr. Lawrence up on his offer because I'm starving. I don't know how to feed myself, uh, and the listeners may not agree. Uh, uh, hello, listener. You're on the air on KZSC. Hello, what are my choices? Oh, is what is your name and where... Is old what is your name? Where are you calling or, from? I'm calling from Seaside, California. Seaside, and and California. What is, and what is your name, good listener? Or what shall we call you? Please, please refer to me as Mr. Danny Big Boots. Mr. Mr. Danny, Danny Big Boots in Seaside, California. What a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> Writing that one down, well, Danny. Well, Danny, Mr. Danny Big, big, big Boots. boots. Uh, all, you know Oliver, what they say about Dan's with Big Boots. Our friend Oliver is, is feet, texting in to say that he wants to dine dashingly. Don't dine and dash, but no, dine dashingly. No, dash. I do everything but dashingly. What do you th- but Danny what do you boots. think, Danny, Danny, B, Danny Big Boots? Okay, I tuned in late, so I don't might know my choices. Oh, yeah, okay. So, Danny, your choices so are to take up your father-in-law on his offer of going to have dinner with him because you're both so sad mm. about your fiancé slash his daughter. So technically, that just he's not your father-in-law. Died. <laughs> or you can father-in-law bust out pay. on your Nearly. own. Yes. So yes. what do you think, Danny? Are you going to go to alone or going to have dinner? No, no, you got to you gotta go and hang out with the old dude because yeah. he's really wealthy and really old. That could end up in your favor. That's I, right. That's, they, you these are my argue thoughts with that. exactly, listener. Thank you, Danny Un- Big Boots. Thank you, Danny Big Boots logic. from Seaside. Uh, okay, stay on the line. Good luck. Keep on no, no, reading, hey, readers. No, 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 I'm stay. listening, tuning in. I'm on the edge of my um, thing that I'm Don't on. Don't fall off. All right, stay on the edge. Stay Don't on. fall off. Okay. Thank okay. you, Danny. Here we go. You ready? The banker signals a car. Taxi! And you soon find wow. yourselves back at the Lawrence residence. <coughs> you are led to the drawing room where you take a seat while Mr. Lawrence goes upstairs to see Ada. You are looking very ill. <gasps> Mrs. Vance. I am quite well, thank you. You answer un- uh, absently, uh, unconsciously emitting a heart-wrung <laughs> sigh. Uh, quite well done, Michael. Uh, <laughs> you can't stay here long without seeing in fancy seeing in fancy the graceful girlish form that had so often flitted through the grand room. Has anything been heard from our poor Lily yet? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Mrs. Vance, the suspense is very hard to bear. It is almost killing me. Oh, poor.
poor Lance. Uh. Your features show the traces of your great suffering. Uh. It's hard for us all to bear, uh. but harder still for you. Uh. Her delicate hand flutters down to your uh. own uh. with a pressure of mute sympathy. Oh. <laughs> and she buries her face in her handkerchief, uh. sobbing softly. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Vance. Well, listeners, <laughs> quick, quick listeners, we need your help. Call or text. We need, we're either going to apologize for our outburst... <laughs> or change the subject. Those are our two. Hey, remember ones. back when our decisions were like become a Tyrannosaurus Rex or kill a guy? Well, you know, Ted, <laughs> I, I was having this same reflection when I was listening back to the episode of Consider the Consequences that we read. Oh, yeah. That's a, actually a choose your own adventure style book from the 1930s, similarly making life decision points along the way. And you can hear that at audienceadventure.show. <gasps> The because podcast? the podcast is up. Oh, so if you, yeah, you know, I made literally the same joke. It was like last week we were blasting giant ants or pulling See? out your laser gun. So now those giant ants were the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> so if you want another period uh, branching fiction, check out audienceadventure.show for the Audience podcast. Audienceadventure.show. Audienceadventure.show. So, but right now, listeners, uh, we need some help. 831-459-4036. You got a call or text, and we're just in the midst of a polite exchange. I didn't mean to downplay the stakes at, for this decision. This is no. like no. this is Chekhov, Ted. This yeah. is the equivalent, the Victorian equivalent of turning into a dinosaur. That's, Artfully well, changing correct. the topic is, That's you know, right. it's the <laughs> highest point of skill. And then I had to artfully change the topic. <laughs> no, yes. I didn't. What did you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, know unless I we go to about page sixty three. <laughs> well what do you think, Lancelot? Are you uh the listeners are silence. They they're well, I think on bated breath. I think we have to apologize for our outbursts. Okay, let's seventy okay. six. Seventy six I understand that the listeners are too overcome with Victorian emotion to um <laughs> 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 much fanning, rapid <clears throat> fanning. <gasps> exactly. Mrs. Vance. Mrs. Vance, listen to me. Are you listening? Vancy? I'm, I'm listening. Yes. <laughs> listen. listen. I should not have brought my gloomy face here to sadden your beautiful one still more. Forgive my me for my reckless outburst. Do not regret it. Let me grieve with you, poor boy, in your trouble. Believe me, sympathy is very sweet. Uh, thank you. <laughs> ah, this is indeed a house of mourning. All of this is getting hard to bear. Test... Oh. Your devotion. It's okay. a devotion. Devotion yes. roll. So now, my devotion, I believe. Page I keeper. Guess. So where's the? How did we do? What? what yeah. How do we rate our devotion? Yeah. Our devotion is average. Average. We're, not, okay. Yeah. we're okay. So, and I do want to say, Danny Big Boots texted in to say, "Never apologize. Never look back." So uh, <laughs> let's see if <laughs> let's see maybe what that was the, be- <laughs> the better path to take. Okay, I rolled a three. So we have average. That's another failure. <laughs> oh. So where do we go for no. a failure? If you fail, we're going back to section 18. I have a failure sound effect here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That is very good. <sighs> 18. Oh, 18. You're so uh, busy with the sound effect. Yes, well, I can't do it. Lancelot, yes. composure. Oh, <laughs> I learned composure at Yale, you know. Oh, God. The mystery of it. Suicide. Suicide! <laughs> If God had taken her from us, I could learn to say, "'Tis well, but that she should weary of us all, "'that she should rush out of this life "'that I thought to make so fair and beautiful to her "'in our united future. I, I, I cannot understand it. "'It is horrible, maddening.'" Musingly, Mrs. Vance murmurs over a few lines from Tom Hood's mournful poem, The Bridge of Sighs. Mad from life's history, swift, To death's mystery. Glad to be hurled anywhere, anywhere, out of the world. Suddenly you cannot sit still. Uh. Impatiently you stride up and down the floor. Oh, she never loved me as I loved her. I could not have done aught to grieve her so. Yeah. If earth had been a desert, (laughs) it must still have been paradise to me while she walked upon it. Oh, Lily, Lily, you were very cruel. Do not grieve so, I beseech you. 
Timidly, she takes your hand and leads you back to a seat. Ooh. <laughs> you will good. make yourself ill. Yeah. We cannot afford to lose you too. Ah. You were so near becoming one of the family that you seem almost to take the place of our dear one who has left us. <sighs> you must think me almost a madman. I startle you with my wild words. I should not have come here. Yes, you should. Mm -hmm. You should come oftener than you do and let oh. me sympathize with you in your trouble. <laughs> who can grieve with you so well as I who knew and loved your dear one? Yeah. Promise to come every day, dear Lance, and let us share our trouble together. I, I will try. You are moved by her gentle friendliness and uh. thinking as you look up that she is a very handsome woman. Really? Not with the beauty of your lost lily. Well, but, you know... Her angelic blonde fairness typified the highest beauty f to you. She's dead. But dead. handsome with a certain queenliness that is very winning. And she's got money. How dark and soft her eyes are. Yeah. How beautiful the sweep of the long, dark lashes. And her cheeks. How rich and soft is the color that glows upon them uh. and deepens to crimson tints upon uh. her full lips. And when that dark, bright face glows with tenderness and feeling, how very fascinating it becomes. And how plump is her pocketbook. Very. <laughs> yes. Then when she takes on herself the role of comforter, yeah. how softly she can pour the oil of healing I'd like to roll on that comforter. troubled waves of feeling. Also, she has the decided advantage of being still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be underestimated. Okay, Moving. to section 25. Yes. Mr. Lawrence eventually comes down... Uh, nothing! ...with a pale and troubled face with Ada, from Ada's sick room. At this point, it is time for dinner. Yes. The I'm... meal goes off rather soberly and solemnly. The array of silver and cut glass is dazzling. The edibles costly and dainty, but you scarcely make a pretense of eating. Mr. Lawrence merely trifles with the viands, uh, and hmm. Mrs. Vance is the only one whose appetite seems equal to the demands of the occasion. Conversation lags. Uh, Though the beautiful widow tries hard to keep your spirits up, you find it is hard to second her efforts, and it is something of a relief when the formal ceremony is over and the banker invites you out for a cigar. You smoke in silence, both lost in thoughts of Lily and Ada, by the time your cigar has burnt itself down, you realize that it is getting quite late. You thank your friend for his kindness. Thank you, my friend, for your kindness. And You're make welcome. your way back to the hotel. And off we go. One thirty. Who else lives in hotels, you know? Just really... Well, when you have as much money and charm as I do. <laughs> it's nice someone will make the bed for you every day. Let oh, me, oh, what? <laughs> real quick, a listener yeah. texted in to say that... Uh, we made them accidentally voice text their father <laughs> the phrase, your delicate hand. <laughs> Thanks to our dramatic reading here. <laughs> this may be you the greatest achievement of our show so far. <laughs> Who is that? Tell, tell wow. that person to call in. You can text back and uh, give me your name so I can That's give you amazing. a shout out. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what else we can have you anyway, accidentally text. Anyway, let's get to the point where I can roll Mrs. Vance's comforter. <laughs> Over the following days, you make an effort to visit the Lawrence home more frequently. Hello. <laughs> While there is no news of Lily, you find some comfort in spending time with friends, and you hope that your presence helps distract the others from their fears about Ada's precarious condition. This particular evening, on several, and on, as on several previous, you are assisting Mrs. Vance by turning the pages of her music as she plays the piano. Ada, looking pale and ethereal in her deep mourning dress, is resting on a low divan nearby and listening while her father sits beside her looking grave and sad. Suddenly the music is interrupted by an unexpected cry in a familiar voice. Papa! Papa! <laughs> you look up and she is there in the doorway. Lily! Surrounded by the glow of gaslights, her hair streaming around her, her white face disordered in a wild show of emotion. Before you have time to process this vision, you are plunged into darkness. The sound of a woman's <laughs> screams fills the grand drawing room. Ada is shouting her sister's name frantically, Ouch. while Mrs. Vance seems to be writhing around on the floor, <laughs> shrieking in abject terror. <laughs> You That's pause a moment to extricate oh, yourself Lily. from the clinging hands of the kneeling woman and bound out into the hall. Oh. All right. 
Oh my God! It's time to <coughs> test our awareness. Testing our oh. awareness. Now, as I recall, I think this is the third one of the. Uh, yes. So far, we've had. We were pretty good at one thing. We were average. So I'm sure we'll be totally good at awareness. Awareness, right, Annika? What is our? We are weak in we awareness. Weak we are in awareness. Very weak. Okay, well, I'm sure I'll roll great, <laughs> like I have. <laughs> oh, it's a six. Oh. I'm it's a success! Ha -ha. Success! Yay. Not so weak as you thought. Success! <laughs> Where does that take us? Takes uh, us to 26. Section 26. 26. 26. We were clearly well aware. The most dangerous of all sections. <laughs> <clears throat> the plot is definitely thickening as if someone had dumped cornstarch into it. But not so fast that it clumps up. Exactly. You mix it with some cold water. Exactly. <laughs> you run excitedly into the hall, immediately <gasps> noticing that the front door is standing <gasps> wide open. You race toward it, fumbling the darkness as your eyes struggle to Ow. adjust, but almost certain that you hear racing footsteps in the distance. When you reach the porch, <gasps> you strain to hear more sounds, and your heart sinks when you recognize the noise of a carriage departing hurriedly. You are not sure who you were chasing, but it's too late to catch them now. You return to the house. So now the game book says to add the keyword pursuit. You got that, uh, Code Keeper? Yep. Okay. Okay. And, and we're going to continue on to section 261. 261. Oh my goodness. Here on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. Wow. Oh, we've got some more characters now. That's very far away. 261. It's almost at the other end of the... It is. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Eventually, you are met by Mr. Lawrence who has been conducting a fruitless search of his own. Together you go back inside, where you find Willis, an aged servitor, relighting the gas. Willis, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> the hall door open, the gas out, and you absent from your post? On oh, my soul, Mr. Lawrence, I could not help it. I saw a, g a, g g g g g g a ghost. Hood, explain yourself. Oh, well... I went to answer the doorbell, and when I opened the door, there stood a ghost, all in white, looking at me and smiling. I was so frightened, I let go the door handle and ran away. I beg your pardon for neglecting my duty, sir, and leaving the door ajar. What, what sort of ghost did you see? Perhaps I ought not to tell you, but begging your pardon, Mr. Lawrence, and yours, Mr. Darling, it was the spirit of our poor lost Miss Lily. <gasps> Mr. Lawrence grows pale as he looks at the man. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. Lawrence. Come on, Lance. Come, Lance, come. Willis. <laughs> we will search the house from top to bottom. There's some mystery here, some mystery, which we may penetrate. So now, time to test awareness. our awareness, which awareness. we were so successful. So That's right. We are, are we weak in awareness? Yes, we are very weak in <laughs> okay. awareness. Okay. Okay. Not so weak. As Give it a roll, like, So I got a three with weak as a failure. Oh. Uh, I run right into the woodshed. <laughs> Where are we going for a failure? We are going to 98. Nine, Nine eight. 98, the number of failure. Uh. <laughs> in this case, yes. Okay. The three of you look into every room and closet, neglecting no hiding Lily. place Lily. from garret to cellar. But no one, either <coughs> ghost Lily. or being, is discovered. At the end of this fruitless search, Mr. Lawrence makes a proposal. Oh, Mr. Lawrence. We will go and see the detective again tonight and learn if any clue has been found. Yes. We must find her body if skill and money combined can accomplish it. I cannot bear for her restless soul to be seeking its body at my hands. Now, listeners, we need your help here listeners. on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. 831-459-4036. 831-459-4036 wow. is the number to call or text. Someone did call and, one from the trees and, to the and suggest that we penetrate the mystery, which I think we're in the midst of. But our options <clears> here <throat> are to go with uh, Mr. Lawrence to visit the detective or to return to the hotel for some rest. This That's a theme. Well, I think the, I th <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> return to the hotel is a theme. Go to lay down. Um, I think that the last listener said penetrate the mystery and that suggests that we go to the detective. I think so. Certainly. I'm you know, with that. there are mysteries to be found back at our hotel room resting? <laughs> <laughs> there are mysteries, but long I, mysteries. I feel like there could be a whole... Uh, 
I don't know, like opioid subplot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of relaxation be. back no at the hotel. He's trying to find the hotel stationery. Some absinthe. Yeah. yeah. Some hallucinogens. Uh-huh. Absinthe makes well, the heart Well, some go another listener uh, is texting in to say that we should go with Lawrence to check out the detective. And if you do, okay. t- if you do text in, make sure to put your name on there so yes, I can uh, give you some some credit. Um, oh, sorry, Danny Big Boots. I just uh, our, uh, our, our number one listener. fan. <laughs> no, we got everybody down in San Benito County, Monterey County, and uh, you can check us out streaming.kzsc.org for That's worldwide. Right. So let's go visit this detective and turn to section thirty-five. Though it is late, you are as impatient as Lily's father to learn more about what is going on. You are in luck. And you find Mr. Shelton, the special detective, still in his office, going through paperwork. Mr. Lawrence Lawrence details the particulars of his daughter's appearance earlier in the evening. The detective listens with the closest attention. When the story is concluded, the detective says, I'm a very practical man, Mr. Lawrence. My profession only makes me more so. When I'm brought in contact with a mystery, I invariably suspect... Crime. Mm-hmm. And I must tell you that I do not believe in the visionary nature of the girl you saw in your hall this evening. I am not a believer in the supernatural. What then is your opinion of the phenomenon? That it was no phenomenon at all, see? It was palpably an attempted robbery. Some girl with a resemblance to your lost daughter was mm-hmm. employed to frighten off the man at the door while her accomplices entered the hall, turned off the light, and perpetrated... A burglary. Huh. Well, now the game book says if you have the keyword clue, we're going to turn to page 160. Annika, do we have the keyword clue? We don't. Oh, Oh. man. All right. We don't have a clue. Okay. Let's turn to 182 and try not to blink. Get it? Uh, Scrolling on, scrolling on. on Scrolling to page 182. Mr. Lawrence is speaking. Oh, great. Uh, (laughs) That guy. He's my favorite character. He's the best character. But there was nothing stolen. The house was searched immediately, for I had an idea rather similar to yours at first, but but nothing had been taken. Nor was there any person concealed in the house. This bland smile is from the comfortable knowledge of my own superior wisdom. The thieves were only frightened off that time, I say. They will come again, feeling secure in the belief that the girl played the ghost to perfection. The next time, do not be frightened, but make an instant effort to capture her, and she can soon be forced to reveal her accomplices. Mm. All right. Now, listeners, we're going to need your help. We're going to make a choice here. So if you feel compelled to return to the house immediately, in case of a second attempt, those smarty pants burglars are going to come back. We're going to go to section 48. Otherwise, if you want to keep talking to this awesome detective fella, we're just going to stay on section 95. So, it started with 831-459 It always starts 4036. The Raymond Chandler fans are going to pick <laughs> to continue talking to this detective. That's Otherwise, the thing about dames. Although that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the smart uh, beat cop Runs on yeah. back to the house immediately in case of the robbery. Maybe the, yes, maybe their plan worked so well they scared us out of the house and now they yep. know we can come back and rob these Mrs. silly Vance, rich people. Rich people. Mrs. Vance is like the Indy 500, nothing but curves and explosions. Danny Big Boots ch- chiming in from Seaside says we should get back to the house quick. Oh, yes, that's a should. strong. It's a strong call. If anyone wants to Mark to call Ghost. in, then join us though. Eight three one four five nine four zero three six. I'd really like to hear from somebody. Uh, you can give us a call. Eight three one four five nine four zero three six. So we're going back to the back yeah. to the house. Let's Lily's check it out. Is in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's not all. Is it? <clears throat> hey, no. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> You suddenly feel an urgent sense of alarm. What if you have been observed leaving the house? A burglary would be another terrible shock for poor Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Shelton, if your theory is correct, we may have been unwise to come here and leave the house unguarded. In my experience, criminals capable of devising a plan of this nature would not be so hasty as to act twice in a single night, eh? Still, if you wish to return for the sake of the women... I can continue my meeting with Mr. Lawrence alone, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so we kind of have another choice now. We're going to go alone to the Lawrence home, and we'll turn to page one, section 187. Yeah. Or, if you feel reassured by this detective's 
deep expertise. He's very, very convincing. Very deep. They're, we're going to... Yeah. Oh, page 95. I think that's where we were going to go before. If it you was, because re- this is basically the same decision again. That's right. So, <laughs> right. No, it was <laughs> no, really. No, listen, it's, it's almost as if the author really wants us to... Are you sure? <laughs> to, <laughs> to stay and talk to the detectives some more. <laughs> Roll against... I don't know. Are you sure? Maybe they're just not giving us another chance to stamp her home. It is true. 831-459-4036. If you, see, if, if you can see clearly... Oh. Through this ruse that we're not seeing through. <laughs> Give us a call or text 831 459 4036 here on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. Keep it together there. What do you think, Archie. Elizabeth? What do you think? I don't know. I'm, I'm reading a lot into the second chance, uh, but it might be because I'm cast as all the bit women parts that I really <laughs> want to go back to the house. I, that's. As good a reason as any. That sounds like a really good. That's reason. That's a good reason. I think we should go. And if too. and if Mr. Lawrence has any more lines, you could just you could you could give Mr. Lawrence a crack a go <laughs> oh, if yes. you feel comfortable. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna turn we're gonna return to the Lawrence home, okay. page one eight seven. One eighty seven. You hurry back to the Lawrence household, <laughs> heart <laughs> racing at every delay that stands between you and the reassurance that all is safe and sound. Upon arrival, you are admitted by Mr. Lawrence's servant, Willis, who tells you that all has been calm since your departure. Filled with relief, but still determined (sighs) to keep careful watch until Mr. Lawrence's return, you spend the rest of the evening alert for any signs of trouble. (sighs) Eventually, Mr. Lawrence returns and thanks you for your trouble. While you are exhausted and ready to return home to bed, you first ask if the detectives revealed anything else of significance. Mr. Lawrence smiles mysteriously. (laughs) No... He offered me a trifling clue. A clue, you say? But I'm sworn to secrecy. Oh. Lest too much be revealed too soon. You well, know that, how police work. That means goes. I'm a suspect, doesn't it? You're too tired to pry, so you bid your friend good night and return to your hotel. Finally, back to the hotel. Oh. My prying days are over. I'm Crack afraid. that opium and that absinthe. Let's Four, go. Let's go. Where are we going, sir? 47. Here, 47. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> apparently you had a lot of things to do back in your hotel room because a month has passed <laughs> since you're meeting with the detective. <laughs> Lost in a blur of sleepless nights uh, and unfulfilled hopes. Uh, you have not wasted all of your time. When you have had th- when you have had the strength to go out, you've spent your time with the Lawrence family, reading poetry to Ada, listening uh, to the music with Mrs. Vance, and sitting in calming silence with Mr. Lawrence. Ada's health is improving, and you can see a relief about I like the this in Mr. Lawrence's eyes. Though grief still fills the household, <laughs> your hotel room feels less like a home than it ever has before, <laughs> and having some family to cling to gives you just enough strength to press on. <laughs> just one surprising event occurred during the past month. Uh-huh. Shortly after Lily's mysterious manifestation, a maid found an inexplicable <laughs> item in the hall of the Lawrence home. A plumbus. It was the broken half of a golden locket, <gasps> such as gentlemen wear on their watch chains. It was of costly workmanship, richly chased, with a delicate monogram set in minute diamonds. The intertwined letters were H.C. Mr. Lawrence took the locket to Mr. Shelton and is on his own and hasn't mentioned it since. You assume that this means it is of little import. Ah. Still, those puzzling initials are one more thing for your tortured mind to dwell upon. Hamburger cheeseburger? (laughs) 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 <laughs> Let's go to 206. Holy, All right. Holy crap. <laughs> 206. What could it mean? Two. What could it mean? You stand on the broad marble steps of the hotel where you board, the autumn sunlight falling goldenly on your face. For a moment, the beautiful day reminds you of your childhood. Aww. And your constant mourning for Lily is interrupted by a reminder of the fond and doting parents you unhappily lost by death. <laughs> In the dawn of manhood. Oh my god, we're Batman. (laughs) Why must unfeeling and relentless death tear away all the love in your life? Why must unfeeling and relentless death tear away? (laughs) These unhappy (laughs) reflections are interrupted when a boy approaches and places in your hand a delicate envelope scented with heliotrope. Thank you, boy. Before turning away. You turn the envelope a moment in your hand, surprised at its abrupt delivery and the unfamiliar writing. In a moment, you tear it open and read these lines on the perfumed sheet. 
my dear friend, <gasps> I enclose a list of some new songs which I wish to try. Will you do me the favor to select them for me and bring them up this afternoon? Yours faithfully, Ethel Vance. This is it. For a moment, you are puzzled. Oh, oh. Hmm. Why would Mrs. Vance <laughs> send a boy to deliver this note to you? Why that boy? When she could simply have sent him to retrieve the songs she desired. Hmm. Oh, you're well, one. it's time to test our awareness once again. Our lowest stat. Okay. <laughs> Let's get that D6 so we're a weak, rolling. Weak in awareness? Listeners. We're weak in awareness. Oh, six success! Hey! Wow, our awareness is actually it's, our strongest. I know, this is amazing. So, we've succeeded. succeeded. The fates. So aware. So, that's going to take us to 99. The number of success. 90. 98 double, is the number of failure. Double good luck. Or 99 is the number of success. 99. Mm. The more you think about it, hmm. the more you realize that Mrs. Vance has been paying an unusual amount of attention to you. Mm. You're a modest man Aww. and slow to imagine womanly interest in your humbling personage. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> Yet you cannot help wondering if Mrs. Vance is beginning to form an attachment to you. Hmm. Well, if you dismiss this idle thought and... By the music as requested, we'll turn to section 61, and if you wish to pay Mrs. Vance a visit directly and discover her intentions, we'll turn to section 169, and we're uh, coming I'm real close. It's going to be the last decision of this I show. I think this is going to be our your last chance to give us a call or text at 831-459-4036. You can call or text 831-459-4036 on the audience decision line here well, let's, on... Let's just do it. Here on KZSE. Um, let's, let's go. Let's find let's out. Roll, roll go straight it. to Mrs. Vance. Oh, we could. Yeah, let's roll, roll for it. it. Should we do even, even odds? Let's give it one more second because uh, just I had to take a chance to clear the line there. Ah. So 831-459-4036. Come on, audience. Danny Big Boots says oh. to, that we should visit Vance. So yes. So we've got... We've got uh, Thank you, Danny. Go straight to it and discover Thanks, her Danny. intentions. 169. Here we go. Don't tell us what that's the number. I'm of. glad that Please, all of Michael. our faithful <laughs> listener. Yeah. Have, well, actually, have we have. Hello, caller. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hi. Hello. You're on the air. Can well, you, you go into page 169. We are. Kind yes, of we are. Well, well, unless you can talk us out. Stay of it. with us. Well, I mean, yeah. Now's your chance. Do you want to pick up the music, or do you want to go straight to this lady's house? I think you should go to her house. Okay. All right. Well, stay stay with us at yeah, least. Hang out there. What's your name, caller? Where are you calling from? Mariposa, Santa Cruz. All right, you can turn your radio down a little bit, and we'll we'll okay. we'll get it going here. One sixty nine okay. is a juicy one. You punctually appear at Mrs. Mr. Lawrence's drawing room that afternoon. Mrs. Vance has laid aside her usual dress of half mourning. Mrs. Vance, put something on. And appear, no, oh, oh, sorry. it appears to be becoming uh, in a more becoming costume of costly black velvet and cream colored brocade, profusely trimmed with rich lace. Diamonds twinkle in her ears and on her breast, and a bunch of vivid scarlet roses are fastened in the jetty braids of her beautiful hair. It is so kind of you to come. <sighs> Ada has gone riding with her father, and I am very lonely. Um, Mrs. Vance, <laughs> I'm afraid that I have neglected my duty and... Failed to purchase the music you requested. I felt that I must talk to you immediately. Never mind the music, Lance. Your <laughs> conversation is one of much greater interest to me. Please come in. The beautiful widow leads you into the drawing room, and you both sit down. Well, this gets us the keyword intentions, and maybe let's take... Should we take a look at our last section here? 123? I think oh, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is great. No reading ahead. <coughs> what is it that brings you here so urgently? You suddenly realize that you I haven't no really idea. thought about how to approach this subject, and you feel more than a little silly for coming here so precipitously. You hesitate, and Mrs. Vance looks momentarily annoyed. Oh, my. Oh, no. no. A charm test. Quick, uh, let's do the charm test. Quick. Roll, roll. Roll it. Okay. Charm are we, what charm are we? Charm go. Uh, We're strong. Strong, strong with strong. charm. Yeah. Success. Three is a success. 163. All right. No. Or should we yes. start with 163 next show? Mm. I don't know. Let's see how good. Let's take a peek. And see how I'm good it is. sorry. Well, I think we're deep. Uh. You know what? We, we're we're <laughs> yeah. getting deep into a Edwardian or Elizabethan or whatever era you classics 
people all around me would know what era we're in. Elizabethan is not like not the classics. Not, no. yeah. <laughs> See, of those are classics. I don't know. It's me versus the four academics on the other <laughs> side of the table here. So that's going to do it for this week's edition of the Audience Adventure Radio Thank Hour. You, audience. Such a cliffhanger, and so yes. it often is. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of these things: is you got to play them a few times, and you can experience all the different ways can to we get through come it. Back and do this next yeah, week? I think we might yes. next week or on a future episode for sure. Uh, thank you. Annika, the page keeper. Woo, Michael yay. Chemers, thank you so much. Tad Leckman, my co-host. Thanks thank as always. You. Elizabeth Swenson, hey. thank you. Misha Cardenas, welcome. Hey, thanks. Th- thank you so me. much. And again, check the podcast at audienceadventure.show. Check out kzsc.org. You can donate to our station there. We really appreciate that. And yeah, we're here every Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Stay tuned for Horn on the Cob with DJ Brown Butter coming up right here on Community Radio. KZSC, audienceadventure.show podcast coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.